Hello, it is the 18th of January 2011 and welcome to today's Silver Log. And I want to talk about the inverted and regular head and shoulders pattern on this particular video. And what I have on the screen now is the gold chart from around 2004 until the end of 2009 before the market had uh, broke out. And what we can see here is that we had an inverted head and shoulders pattern. This was the left shoulder. This was the head and the right shoulder in here. Now what I got criticized for back in the day was for actually saying this was a head and shoulders or an inverted head and shoulders pattern because I had people telling me, you know what? You can only have an inverted head and shoulders pattern on a downtrend as you can only have a head and shoulders on an uptrend. And we can see that before this happened, the market for gold was in that of an uptrend. Now these names, head and shoulders, it's really just fancy words more than anything. But let's look at the chart and see what it tells us. Back in the day, we got up to this, uh, it was 1029 when it reached this peak in here. And it sold off, it uh, had a small rally. Now, that's what completes the right shoulder, a, or left shoulder, the first shoulder, a small rally, but not quite that big. And then, boom, it had the panic sell-off. So what the market indicator stated is that sellers took over control but for that for it to finish the head it needs to have a decent rally from this point which matches from before and that's what happened and within the second shoulder it said that the sellers were not as aggressive on this time frame than it was on this one and that would be that of a bullish indicator also, what a lot of people like to do to look for directions of the head and shoulders pattern is they calculate the length of it top to bottom. And the top part, it was actually 1029, and the bottom, it actually pierced the 700 level. So some people would say that's a gain of over 300. Gold was going to 1300. You know what? I don't do that. I look for percentile moves. And I looked at the difference of the gain because it bottomed at 700 and it went to 1,000. So the gain was 300 on 700. You take 3 and divide it by 7, you'll get about 42%. And that was the gain I was expecting on the breakout of 1,000. 42% would take you to about 1,420. And that's pretty much exactly where gold has last need its resistance. For example, let's take a regular head and shoulders pattern. Say something like this in here. Now if the top was 15 and the neckline was 5, well if we take the difference of the two which is 10 and subtract it from 5, you get negative 5. So that's one of the reasons why I do it that way. Instead, if that was the case, it would have lost two-thirds its value from 15 to 10. And from the breakdown of 5, I would expect it again to lose two-thirds of its value. And thus, I would say it would be going to about $2 or, or around that range or so. So therefore, it doesn't matter if it's an upward trend or a downward trend. If anything, I would rather play an inverted head and shoulders pattern on an upward trend and I'd rather play a head and shoulders on a downward trend. Now let's move on to silver. This is the, excuse me, this is the silver price set, uh, over the last little while. And within this, we can see that there would be a left shoulder, a head, and that of a right shoulder. Now this is in an upward trend. The market is going higher, and then all of a sudden, it's now really more than anything correcting through that of time and I've been stating that the 28th level that, that's the big level so far during this rally it has held it very very nicely and if this becomes a failure meaning 
the percentages of head and shoulders and inverted head and shoulders, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's 75% or 80. I don't know. But that means it doesn't always work. And when it doesn't work, it becomes a failed move. The fast move would be in the opposite direction, would at least take you to this neckline, which is uh, $31.28 as its current high now, and most likely even higher than that. But at the same point, if it uh, finds resistance here, what would happen is it's finding resistance at the neckline, and that would bring us reason to go down towards that 26 or the uh, 25 level that I've been talking about. Now, this is a uh, chart that I just pulled up that I worked on a, a little while ago. In fact, the last time I looked at it was somewhere in here. There's really no dates in here. These are just numbers, uh, each one representing a week. And this automated trend line is that of a gain of 0.7% a week, I believe. I can uh, put the exact number in the more information box because... I can refer to it after I've done this video. But it started with this. It actually hit this level on the intraday level. Same thing here. So it has hit these exact hits in here. And then we had the market consolidate through time during the 2010 period. And since the rally, it has came up towards this trend line. Now, this is very bullish how it's gotten above it. And it's now holding this area very well. If it can maintain or manage to get above this line, that could give us the parabolic uh, move needed to get to the next big levels, which would roughly be towards the area of around uh, $50 an ounce or so. Also, these lines below, this is Fibonacci. And if it stays above this blue line, that means it is in mode of super bullish because that's a 23.6% Fibonacci retracement from the uh, most recent highs and lows. And this is the 38.2. So staying above the orange line, that says bullish. Staying above the blue line, super bullish. If it's below the purple line here, that is bearish. And if it's below the green line, it is super bearish. So everything is at a very bullish case. We're seeing the market correct through time. Now also, what I want you to do sometimes if you are wondering about, I don't know if I should buy, is get a piece of paper, any piece of paper. It can be currency like uh, this in here, and then take a uh, silver bullion together. And what I want you to do is look at the two together and think, what are dealers basing their prices on? And the answer to that is, what traders on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and the London Bullion Market and all of these COMEX prices, they're basing their prices on that. And then they'll lift their prices up a little bit. Oh, so silver's trading at $29. Yeah, I'm going to sell my maples for $32. Yeah, silver's now at $31. I'll sell it to you for $34. And if it goes way, way lower, say we retrace down to $20, yeah, I can give it to you for $26, $27. But, and, and what I'm stating is, they are using the paper contracts to determine their prices. And when I look, when I just sit back and think about it for just a second, I'm like, man, that's insane. And we live in an insane world. So if I'm able to trade fiat currency for this at this level, and I have recently just bought some uh, silver, four ounces, I'm looking to even get some more because the way the markets have been holding up right now has been extremely, extremely bullish. So thank you for watching this video and uh, have yourself a great day everyone. Bye-bye.